Okay, so I've gone and put on all the rest of my pyramid beads. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oops. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Um, I made a boo-boo. I need 14 on mine. I only got 12 beads out here. I'm sorry. I'll be back when I add my last two on. <laughs> I'll leave it to Ruby. <laughs> okay, this time I made sure I <laughs> got my 14 beads on now. Okay. So, now you're exiting out of your, um, uh, pyramid bead and you're going to pick up two silver beads or your end beads whatever you're using on this end and you're just going to exit through that top bead like so and then you're going to pick up two more and you're going to exit into the pyramid bead and no other bead so you're exiting like this just the pyramid bead with your two on and you're going to push those in. So you kind of have this funky looking thing up there like that. Okay. Now we're going to go along and embellish the edges before we put our Montes on. As you can see, I am going to run out of thread. So when I run out of thread, I'm going to show you how to tie off and tie on some new thread because um, you probably will definitely need a uh, new thread. So in this area here where we're between our pyramids we're going to pick up two of our purples and I did end up changing um, colors of my beads here these three millimeter fire polish to magic purple gorgeous color you're gonna pick up one fire polish and two more seed beads and this is what you'll have on your needle two elevens a fire polish two elevens you're just going to go directly across into just the pyramid bead like so. Okay, and then you're going to pull this like that. And your beads are going to sit on the outside like that. In this middle piece here, you're just going to pick up three of that color that you're, you're working in in this area. And you're just going to go into the next pyramid bead and not any seed beads. So be very careful when you're going through your pyramid, you kind of move those 11 O's out of your way so you're not hitting them. Okay, so you're going to place those on that side. You're going to pick up two of your main color, a fire polish and two more. Exiting out of this side of the pyramid, go into the pyramid bead on this side. Like so. Right? Now pick up three of your color in the middle there, where it's just got your five beads, and then exit through just the pyramid bead. And put those in place. Pick up two purple, your fire polish and two of your main color. And jump across and go into the pyramid bead only. So just do this all the way down your entire bracelet till you get to the other end. And if you run out of thread, um, I there is videos on, on how to tie on and tie off um, thread. You gotta just kinda use your common sense. When you know you're gonna be going through um, beads repeatedly you don't want to have any knots in those beads because if you have knots you aren't going to get your needle through those beads so you, this is where you want to be extremely careful tying on and tying off your thread all right because um, you're putting on your um, outside row right now and you're not going to be going through these beads anymore so if you run out of thread tie off in the row that you're putting on right now so or stick with the middle beads if you can stick with these guys in here because you're not going to be going through any of these beads anymore okay so 
don't be tying off any be anywhere that you are going to be going through uh, your pyramid beads because if there's a knot inside that pyramid bead you're not going to get your monties on okay because that's the beads the only beads will be working out of and stay away from um, putting knots in your ends in these beads as well stay out of those okay just giving you kind of a tip here because I'm, I'm giving you forewarning that you're going to be going through these pyramid beads again you're not going to be going through any of these so tie off if you have to in this area here um, let me just finish this row out I don't have far to go and I'll show you um, what to do on this side I'm still picking up my uh, sequence here So if you know you're going to run out of thread before you get to this, this end here, tie off right now because you don't, don't want knots in that end there because you're going to be going through that, this area here to put your closure on. And I have a video coming up for this ring, um, this one. this one as well. They're both the same ring, just um, just done a little bit uh, a little bit different on the embellishing. But they are gorgeous rings. You're going to like this this ring pattern. Okay, and I'm almost to the end here. And I am going to run out of thread, but not just yet. Okay, so I'm at the end. Oopsies, I went through my thread there. I don't want to do that because it'll split it. Oops. All right. I'm at the end now where my tail is. You're going to do the same thing over here. Pick up two of your end beads and just go through this hole here, the middle one, adding two beads on each side. So pick up two more and go into the pyramid bead only, like so, and leave these end beads alone. These are forbidden to tie knots in, okay? And now you're just going to, oops, pull that tight. You're just going to work all the way down this side now, mimicking exactly what you did over here. And when I do this, I will come back and show you what to do next, okay? Okay, so I'm at a point now where I'm going to tie off my thread. And as I told you before, you want to stick with tying off knots in between here. So I ended up, um, I'm going to tie off in the purple section. So I'm going to pick up three of these because I have enough thread to do this. And I want to be exiting in this purple section because there's more beads to, um, to go through. So... You're exiting out of your pyramid bead. Just go through some of your beads here and begin tying off knots. So I'm just going to go between the two seed beads, like so. And I'm going to tie some half hitch knots. Go through this bead here. I'm just going to work my way all the way around, tying half hitch knots, at least four or five of them. and going through beads. All right, so I'm going to go through this end one. Again, I'm going to tie some more. Actually, I'm going to do a double one here because I'm going to put that knot inside of the um, fire polish. Keeping all of my work nice and tight. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off. And now you got to kind of remember where you left off. And I don't know what happened here, but I got a knot right on the eye of my needle. <laughs> don't know how that happened. All right. I'm going to thread a needle and I'll be back with some more thread. 
Okay, so I strung on a good yard and a half again, just because I don't know how much more I'm going to need, and I'd rather have a little extra than not enough. So, as you can see, I ended um, over here. And we want to be exiting out of this pyramid bead so we can continue with our pattern. So, all you're going to do is go between, because you're going to tie a knot here, so you want to go between your fire polish and your seed bead of the previous um, section you put on and just pull your thread through till you have your tail hanging out okay and then you're going to tie um, a knot with your thread between the fire polish and the seed bead on the side you're working on so tie a nice tight knot and I'm going to tie another one is I'm going to pull this knot inside of that fire polish bead. And I like to take my pliers and I like to grip the end and pull that knot tight. All right. Now, let's pull this knot inside of our fire bead, fire polish bead. So this is adding new thread and there the knot is slipped inside. Now just tie a couple of half hitch knots like so. I'm tying it between the seed beads right now to secure that thread through the fire polish or through the seed bead and back through the pyramid bead with no knots going inside that pyramid bead Okay, and I'm going to tie one more to secure my thread. Nice and tight. And then I'm going to go through these three beads that I my last three beads I put on, and then through my pyramid bead again. And now we are in the place we need to be to continue our embellishment. Now this thread here, you can cut off because it's secured. You half hitch knot. Oh my god, all my scissors suck balls. I need to buy two scissors. It doesn't matter what pair I use, they're junk. Okay, continue doing your embellishment. So we're at near the end here, so I might as well just stay on camera so I don't have to keep going on and off. And I'm just going to continue along now. And I have all new thread. Picking up my alternate colors. And now we got our last section of fire polish to put on. And we're going to go through pyramid bead. Try not to snag your 11 O's, which I almost did. All right. Okie doke. So now we're at the end here. We're at the end of our, um, why is that so big? I don't know. What you're going to do is you're going to come up through the two seed beads that you put on kind of pushing these to the back. If you see what I mean? The two that you put on, push them behind the three here. So go up into this one, into these two. Because now we're just going to sew one end of our uh, closure on. And yeah, I got a knot. Woohoo, I'm so excited. All right. Okay. So as you can see, there's the three beads that we originally put on when we started and these are the, the two beads we added on each side as we were embellishing. So now you're going to pick up two more silver, whatever your end color is, and you're just going to go down through these two beads. Okay. And then you're going to pick up two more beads and you're going to go back up all three beads like that. 
putting placing two beads so you don't see any threads and we're not going repeatedly through our um, and this is what you should have okay you have put two beads here and you've just added two here kind of push them flat and now we're going to add our um, some reason this isn't sitting properly and I don't know why I'm not too sure maybe I pulled it too tight I don't know okay now you're going to take your cup button or whatever button you're using I recommend you get cup buttons because these are gorgeous and you're going to put your needle through one end of your cup button then you're going to pick up two of your purple color or whatever color you're using and go down through the other hole of your cut button and pull your thread through that. Now you're going to stay in like a herringbone stitch so go down through only one bead on the other side pull this through and place your cut button there. Go back up into the bead you just exited in or into the beside the bead where you just exited and pull that through it's kind of like um like a herringbone and then back up into your cut button and we're just going to keep reinforcing this as many times as we can so go through your two seed beads on top and go back down into your cut button and back down into the first seed bead below your cup button like a herringbone and we're going to go up one more time just to reinforce it it can be a bit challenging Just trying to get through the bead once is challenging without breaking your beads. There we go. All right, now you're going to go all the way down. You're going to exit through all your outside beads, like so, on the edge. And then you want to exit through pyramid bead. But you want to be on top. Let me show you before we do this. Okay, you want to exit on the top of your pyramid bead. So go through your pyramid bead like that. So it comes out on top. And pull tight. All right. So that's it. Your cup button is now on. All right, let's work with our beautiful, beautiful Shrosky Montes. You're exiting on this side of your pyramid bead. As you can see, I'm on one side. So pick up one of your 11 O's, a Monty, and one of your 11 O's. You're exiting on this side. You want to exit on this side of the pyramid bead now. So go across on a diagonal and exit through the pyramid bead across and just sit this bead on top this Monty just place it on top like that pick up an 11 0 another Monty 11 -0. you're exiting on this side so now you're going to go across and exit on the other side so you're making a diagonal going across and just place this nicely on top pull your thread tight because you want your oopsies look what I just did wow what a dork take that off you're not supposed to put a Monty there oopsies man oh man oh man oopsies all right 
all you're going to do is go through the three end beads here on this middle piece. You're not putting anything in there and through your Monty or through your pyramid bead. So you're exiting in the purple section, not in that silver section. Keeping your work pulled nice and tight, okay? Now we're in the right area. Now I'll pick up a 11O, a Monty, and 11O. Exiting on this side. Exit through the next pyramid bead, but on a diagonal. Okay? Pulling this nice and tight. Making sure you snag a few knots along the way. Wow. Sometimes I wonder how this thread even knots. Like, so stupid how it knots. Okay, pull that nice and tight. Pick up an 11 a Monty, an 11 Oh, no, don't. Shoot. I keep forgetting about this. Wow. Go through the side three beads here and then exit through the pyramid bead. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> I just designed this stuff. I don't know how to make it. <laughs> it's really funny too because when I was making my earrings yesterday, I was like, I forgot how to do it. Okay, so we're exiting here. Go on a diagonal and exit through this pyramid and through those three beads before I forget because I'll probably just put a Monty on. Place that there. Exit through these three beads on the side. And then through your pyramid bead. Voila. I did it. Without adding a Monty. 11 0, a Monty, and 11 0. We're on this side. We're going to exit on this side of the next pyramid bead. And pull tight and now exit through these three beads okay I'm gonna go off camera and finish putting the rest of my Monty's on look at how gorgeous that looks they're not quite stable yet but when we come we go back after we saw our other end of our closure on here <clears throat> we'll come back and I'll show you um, how to finish off your bracelet okay Okie doke. So we're at the end now and I'm exiting through the pyramid bead and I'm just going to go up through the two side beads here and again I push the two extra beads that we put on the side, push them to the back. Now you're going to pick up two, two more, and go back down through the other side of the uh, end there and place those two beads on top. Flip your work over, and you're going to add two beads in there. <coughs> Sorry. And you're exiting over here, so go back up through all the beads on that row. So there should be three beads you're going through. And you're going to place these two beads in behind as support, basically. And that tail is really long. Okay. Now you're going to begin doing... Um, a herringbone stitch. Um, if you need to do a herringbone stitch to make your bracelet a little bit longer, um, I recommend doing it this way before putting on your beads to go over your uh, cup button. So in order to do this herringbone stitch you have these two beads on top. So you're going to pick up two of your silver beads and you're going to, I'm going to work this way, you're going to drop down only into the first bead. Jump over. Okay, so you're going to go down into the next bead and one bead only. Pull that through. Okay, and you kind of sit these two on top. So you're going to go across now into the next bead and go back up into 
two beads. So you're going into the first one that's right beside where you're exiting. Hope you can see that. I'm exiting here. I jumped across in this bead here and I'm going up into this bead and the one new one I just put on. So there's my start of my herringbone. So you have two beads on top. Pick up two more. Actually, I'm going to pick up two purples. I want to just make it a little different. You're exiting here on this one. Go down into the next bead. Placing these two beads on top. Now in order to get back up, you have to go across and exit through, go back up through the silver bead, one silver bead, and one the one you just put on. Okay, so you're going to do this and pulling it nice and tight. So now you've placed these two beads on top. Now we're, I'm going to add, in this bracelet here I added six and I found it to be too big. So I'm only going to add five rows. So I'm going to add, <coughs> uh, pick up two more, oops, that's not two, that's four. Pick up two more beads and exit through the purple bead, like so. This just gives your bracelet a little length and finishes it off nicely. Now you're going to go across and go back up in the purple bead and the one bead. Oops, it's really hard to do like this, but I'm going into the purple bead and into the silver bead, which I just added. And we're going to pull this nice and tight. All right, now I'm going to do one more. Pick up two more. I'm going down just into the one bead, the silver, the last bead I put on. All right. And now jump across and go in. These won't sit right until you put your thread through them. So go through the bead beside and back up into the last bead you put on and pull that tight. There. So this is what you have, really pretty herringbone finish on your uh, end. Now we're going to add our beads for our cut button. Now I'm finding every bead is different, so I'm just going to pick up I'm going to start with 20. I'm going to start with 20. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now let's fold this over. And you can see that's definitely cut buttons not going to fit through there comfortably. So I'm going to put on 21, 22, 23, 24. I'll put on four more. Okay. Put on four more and let's see how well the cut button fits through there. And this is where you might want to try it on. So I'm going to do this. So this is definitely going to be um, enough. Actually, I think I'm going to take two off and only have 24. Toe holes are different. Depends what kind of bead you use. So just, just use your judgment. And I'm going to go down now into two beads on the other side. And I'm just going to keep reinforcing this. But first, before we reinforce this, let's try it on. Let's make sure our cup button fits through that hole. So I'm, I'm assuming it's going to, and it's going to fit comfortably. See? So that's how you're going to try that. If it wasn't going to fit, then you would just pull your needle back up and go through. So let's get this good and reinforced. So I'm working over two, three beads. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to have to keep going in the same beads. So let's pull this nice and tight and let's get this good and reinforced before we finish off our Montes. 
So I'm just going through all the beads that I just put on, making my bracelet good and strong. I don't know, I just like this herringbone. If you don't like the herringbone stitch, then by all means you don't have to do it. You can do whatever you want on the ends. I just try to make this um, not so boring. And through that bead. Oopsies, my thread needs to... Oops. This really likes to knot when I go to do this. Alright, so I'm going to go down, drop down into the purple bead here and I'm going to jump across and reinforce it from the, all the way down there. So let's go through all the beads. So there, I'm going back like three, three beads onto my herringbone and I'm just going to carry on reinforcing. Pulling really tight. And keep on going. It gets a, as you're pulling it tight, it makes it a little harder for you to um, get through your beads. Now this is going to be the last time we reinforce, so you're just going to take your needle and go right down that entire side of beads, like that. Because this is the last time we're going to reinforce. And pull that nice and tight. So there, your cup button will be secure on here on your bracelet and you have a really pretty pretty finishing touch there so now we need to be exiting on the side where we haven't gone into our Monty and I happen to be exiting in the right place so just bring your needle through your pyramid bead like so pulling all your work nice and tight and snug up against your pyramid bead. I really think that's a beautiful closure, finishing touch. So I hope you guys like that new technique that I like to do. You're going to pick up one seed bead. Oops, my thread snagged around the claw of the Monty and you got to watch that. It's going to happen. All right, and now you can see you can clearly see the side that you haven't gone through and there's another hole in your Monty see I haven't gone through that side so I'm picking up a purple bead and I'm going to put this Monty in place now pick up your other one purple bead again you're going to exit on a diagonal and you're going to go through your pyramid bead on this side pulling this Monty nice and snuggy tight in between your pyramid beads. So now that's nice and, and, and firm in there. Go through your three side beads on your one color and through your pyramid bead. Because now we have to finish the other side of our Montes or they'll just flop around on here. Pulling that tight. All right. Now you could see the, the second hole we haven't gone through on this Monty here. So pick up a seed bead and go through that second hole on a diagonal. And pull that bead in place. Pick up another bead and now exit through the pyramid on the other side in a diagonal. You can kind of see where you have to go as you're working with your bracelet. You can see that you have to go on a diagonal. There's no other way and pull that bead nice and tight in place. So now your Montes are sitting on top here very securely. And then you're just going to go through these three beads. Like so. And 
then through your pyramid bead. So basically, um, your main parts here have been reinforced along the edges, which is a good thing because it's always good for anything being reinforced. I'm going to go finish this off camera and I'm going to come back and show you the finished, absolute finish. And I'm just going to weave this, um, this tail in. So I'm going to thread a needle on it and I'm going to weave that in and I will be back. Okay, I have completely finished tying off all my, um, my ends and I have completed my bracelet. As you can see, my tail's gone. I cleaned it all off. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. These are just fun, 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 uh, gorgeous bracelets. Now, I, I wanted to mention too that you may be able to make this with Tila beads. I'm never tried it yet, but I don't see why you can't because I think the distance uh, between the holes are pretty much the same on a Tila bead, maybe just a tad, tad bit smaller. Um, but then again, you can, you can, if you don't have pyramid beads, try it with uh, Tila beads. It, it may even work. It may work with Rulas. It may work with uh, Super Duos. You may want to do something in here instead of using a pyramid bead. Um, and same with the cup buttons. Uh, if you don't have a cup button, like I said, you can use a regular button, but I'll tell you, these really finish it off. When you're making a bracelet that has crystals in it, um, these cup buttons are, are absolute perfect finishing touch for any bracelet. And same with this kind of herringbone closure. I really like this. This one I did make it a little wee bit too big, so I was going to close off, um, go through this here and close off some of the herringbone and make this just a tiny bit smaller like this one is perfect so anyways I really 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 hope you guys enjoyed this fun fun project um, I had so much fun making these I love them I, I would like to make these in like practically every color of a clothing that I own uh, my work uniform is is red and blue my shirts red and my pants are dark blue so um, that's the back of it and it's just simply a gorgeous bracelet all the way around anyway um, if you like this give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys soon on the next video have fun take care bye